Okay, guys. Uh, for the first lecture in this hall, we'll, uh, we have Mihai Pop here, who reveals a pearl secret. Okay, thank you. Um, it's actually not the pearl secret, but pearl secret, and you'll see in a few minutes why. Uh, I'm, uh, I'm Mihai Pop, as you were told. Uh, I come from uh, Cluj Napoca, from the Cluj PM group. And uh, on, on before I start, I do want to thank all the guys from Cluj PM, which are in the back of the room. They've already seen the presentation at one of their Cluj PM meetings, so if I'm pretty boring for you guys, but thanks for cheering up. And so let's get started. As the description uh, of this presentation said, uh, this talk is is about the is about pearl secret, but it's also about minions. And I want to ask you, who is here because of the minions? Not so many. Okay. Well, I love minions. Uh, I have two of them here. Whatever. Um, it's just that I found this pearl secrets things that I'm gonna present you, and I think they're pretty connected to one of my things. Uh, which are the minions, I really love them. And I made really cute connections between them, but I think that if, even if you don't like minions, you, the, the outcome of this presentation should be some stuff about Pearl Secret, and that is um, some very, mm, shouldn't be here, whoops. Oh well. Um, should be some very interesting names of some very interesting operators and um, other instructions that are the secret of Perl. Uh, can all be found. You you will see that for each uh, funny name here, I found a minion that's really cute and connected to this. But the thing is that. The talk is about this module here. You'll all find on CPAN. I think now it's modified it's on Meta CPAN. I don't know, the, the, the presentation was done earlier. But the idea is that I've been developing, I've been writing Perl uh, a bit more than two years. And at some point, one of my colleagues wrote some, write, uh, wrote some code. Uh, I didn't understand exactly what it does. I figured it out from the context. But uh, then I asked, uh, uh, I asked, where, how, how did you find this stuff? And it says, well, there are plenty of stuff you can, you can find out in Perl. You just have to know where to find, it, find them. And this is one of the, one of the few. Um, Perl Secret, it's called. And it's just a brief presentation uh, about this module. Uh, this is why I consider this presentation to be as, uh, for beginners, because if you're a bit more than a beginner, you can always go on this link here and see what it's all about. I'll just present it to you in a funny way and meaning connected. Okay, so first one, Venus. It performs an identification of the value on its right or its left, depending on the version it's used. And it's an operator which is used like this. You have a zero plus or a plus zero. And if you write, you have like a few examples over here. Zero plus that string gives you 23. Zero plus a float between uh, commas, which is also a string, it gives you the three, and so on. You can even uh, modificate 42 euros to 42. Two cents will give you nothing because it has to start with a number. But it's really cute, and it's another way to. Uh, get out numbers from, from the strings. Baby guard. Um, for the ones that did raise their hands, like minions, don't ever do this to your children. Okay, please. I mean, I, I, I'm, I'm, a, I'm, I'm a, a really big fan of minions, but yeah, don't, don't do this, please. Okay, for each... Uh, for each uh, operator here, it says there that it was discovered by Larry, by someone in some year. You'll see that it has some alternate nicknames. Nicknames were, I don't know, given after their feelings, their did the, the discoverer's feelings. But the important thing is that the Perl interpreter does some stuff when it goes through the code, and it says, well, first you have I don't know, use strict use warnings, then you have some functions, modules, whatever. Uh, it, the idea is that 
these things that that I'm presenting you here were discovered, meaning that nobody thought at first to actually build this stuff. Nobody thought thought that it should have a zero plus to ramificate stuff. But the point interpreter does that because, uh, for unknown reasons, they, they these were just found afterwards. Okay, nobody planned this to happen. This is why they are discovered. So what does the baby card operator do? Uh, do? It performs least interpolation inside a string. The least items are separated by the value of uh, inverted commas. And here's an example. Um, at, in the beginning here, it, uh, that, uh, um, uh, the first one is how it looks like. Then there's an example of how you, how you actually use it. For example, let's say you have uh, you, you split the uh, strings f uh, with uh, with a comma. Then you execute the following um, uh, SQL instruction. Well, you can have the ID in uh, this um, array here. So from the employee hash, you take the keys out and you split them by commas, and you actually have an SQL standard instruction. Yes. Um, yeah. Well, I, <laughs> nice. And this one? Anyone? Woo. Okay. Well, at actually at the end, there's there's gonna be uh, just because these were discovered and these are not planned to be like this necessarily. It may happen that with further versions, this will this will this will not be okay to use. And my advice at the end of the presentation would have been do do not try to use them as less as you can, or just use the ones that look to you. Um, I don't know, safety here, because there are some that are easy to understand, like this one, but there are some like you'll have pluses and minuses one after the other, and then that's that's horrible to 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 debug and to uh, to keep that for for a safe uh, application. Bang bang, yeah, some emails banging some nails. Common used by C programmers even before Perl existed. It looks like uh, it performs Boolean conversion by performing logical negation twice. And it's like this. I think you've probably seen this before. Anyone using it? OK. Some of the guys. So you have something like, I mean, if you have a true value, and if you, if you, if you uh, negate it twice, it, you, it, will give you a, it will give you a true value. Uh, and well, if you have undef, for example, it will give you a false value. And it's just two uh, exclamation marks. Space station. High precedence notification. What does this mean? So yeah, that's what I'm talking about. If you have a minus plus and a minus, at the first time you see this code, you will see what the hell is this. You have minus plus minus a string, and it will give you like the first one I presented you, the numbers out of it. It's just um, um, there are some differences. For example, when you see two cents, that was you go, if I go back, you will see that that was uh, um, they they wouldn't find anything in that, so it was an empty uh, uh, an empty scalar because the string didn't start with a number. Here, what it does, it says plus two cents, and for the last example, it prints out minus two b five times. Who uses it? Nobody. Good. Okay, key to the truth. Millions are just USBs. No. No, millions are not just USBs. I found just this picture and I find it hideous. I, millions are cute. They're not USBs. Good. Um, the key to the truth was discovered by Toby Inkster in 2013. And it's a combination between the first things I presented. I'll just show you the example. It's easier. So you have zero plus bang bang. So you have a bang bang plus zero plus. It transforms it in a number. You have, first we had a true value. Now we have a, uh, uh, an, an actually number, and it's one. It's the usually true number. Uh, well, you have other languages when anything is true but zero, but here it is a one. And and uh, bang bang and def was false, and zero plus false gives you a zero. I mean the actually number. Does that make sense? Anyone using it? 
Not yet. Good. Screwdriver operators. Millions use them all the time. There are four of them, and I'll present them each. I'll go, I'll go roughly through them. Flathead. It's, it's, uh, all of them are combinations with bang bangs and so on. It's minus equal double exclamation marks, and what it does is decrementing x if y, or decrementing x unless y. Okay, so if you have if you have a, a double 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 exclamation marks, it means that it it transforms it to boolean. It's a true value. So if y, just decrement x, and the other way around unless y. And you also have them with pluses. So increment x if y or unless y. <laughs> it's called Phillips, just like I don't know, general screwdrivers names, companies, Torx. That's that's a bit different. It doesn't multiply x with anything. It gives uh, uh, that's yeah. It's at, it's it it does set x to zero, uh, but it works the other way around. So it sets x to zero unless y when you have a bang bang, and if y if you have only one exclamation mark. Uh, and some an observation here, the Torx screwdriver operator does not work properly with negative numbers different from minus 1 on Perl versions lower than equal to 5.13.5. So that's what I was telling you about earlier. Not all of them are safe, but yeah, they work and they're quite interesting. Positive, the fourth one, uh, it uh, assigns an empty string to, to x unless y and if y. Then we have enterprise, and this is one of my favorites. Um, let's assume you have uh, this shopping list, yeah, with bread and milk, and you have to add something to the shopping list, but only if you don't have them in, I don't know, in your cupboard. So let's say we want to have apples in the, our shopping list if we have less than two apples. If we, if, we, if, we have, if we don't have enough bananas, we should add the bananas to the list and so on. How can we do this? by not writing these four lines over here. I mean, push something if something, push something if something. This is where it, this guy comes, enterprise it's called, and it push, and it puts the, the value, apples, bananas, cherries, and to tonic for the ones who drink alcohol. Uh, probably most of this in this room. Uh, it puts them into, into commas, and then multiplies it, might multiplies it with Bang banging the condition in in here. So if the conditions are at the end. Bang bang gives us the true value of that, and then we multiply it apples zero times or one time. So we'll have apples, bananas, cherries, and tonic as a part of the scalar only if these values are true. And we can actually add add them like this from the beginning to the the the, the first uh, array. Yes. Yeah. Thanks. Questions. Make sense? I find it quite interesting, and it's quite useful when you write code. I mean, when you have to have big, larger arrays with different conditions. Yes. If bang bang uh, returns undef, returns sorry returns an empty string, then shouldn't this produce a warning? Uh, so the question was, if bang bang gives undef, what what's happening? It doesn't actually work as bang bang. It was just in inspired by it. I think it works all the time. I'm not I'm not sure what's the answer to that. You can try it, uh, but I think it works. I think it works all the time. And undef would be um, uh, a false value, so multiplied by zero. Okay. So the the condition the condition that has to be true. It's just like writing an if instead of x double exclamation marks, just put an if there. But you cannot write code with if and else inside an array in Perl, but you can write it like this. It's a funny way to get around things. But yeah, it probably be maybe buggy, I'm not sure. That's why I, I was telling you in the beginning, not not all of them are safe. I found this quite often written in code. Who who else uses it? Okay, and yeah, and uh, 
do you know what happens if it if the condition is undef? It's false, right? So okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, Abbott and Costello. This is like Mike and Dave again from the Minions. This operator makes a false value disappear in list context. It simply replaces a false scare by the empty list. Sorry. Here it is. Okay. So you can write whatever uh, or nothing. And if it replaces is the, the, the empty scalar over there with nothing, and you, you won't have a shopping list with bread, milk, undef, undef, then apples. You'll have bread, milk, and apples. Okay? Go see. Does anyone know what that what that means? If you don't, don't if don't search on Google. Don't search on Google images at all. Just imagine that it looks something like this guy over here. <laughs> it has another nickname, Saturn. You'll see why. It kind of looked like like the the planet. Uh, yeah, I just wrote this here. Consider yourself lucky if you don't know what Goatsy means. And it's like this. Uh, what it does, it counts uh, the 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 words, and it uh, assigns that thing to to the vari the variable I used. That's n. So, for example, in the first one, that would be three. Then, um, yeah, it depends on 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 the condition you use. If you uh, let's say compare the string a b a b with that, it will give you the first a, and it will sign how many did you did you find, and that is one. If you use it, uh, the, if you use the regex with a g at the end, it will count how many a's, and it will automatically assign that to the value to the variable. Okay, so you can add the how many times you find a in the in the in the last example. I mean, okay, on the same line. It's just easier way to write code. And I, I find it cute because if you write it like, oh, uh, and some more examples, maybe this will be easier. Uh, and this is quite useful because if you find in that string the four times a, it will sign the four to n, and it will sign the, the, the a as a, as a character, as a string, to the value we put inside the brackets over there, like x. Okay, and you can, you can even have an, uh, an array over there. And it, uh, for, for the var variable n, it will also assign 4. But the array will be the string over there, yes, with 4 a's. That's what the, the, the regular expression found. And the last comment shows us why it looks like the minion I first presented you. If you put an O over there or a 0, it looks like this guy. We need a fat comma. And we're coming to an end. Visual looks like a fat comma, but like I, I presented you earlier, but it's a bit different. Um, so uh, if we have this constants over there, and we'll have this this uh, uh, hash with a fat comma, it will um, it, it this would be equivalent to 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 the following writing in 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 a sin, in a, in, a, in a single line so it will automatically transform this into an array like one green two red three yellow we can also define hashes like that but yeah so it's just another way of defining hashes anyone using it not yet not ever because we have easier way to do it it's just it exists so, conclusions. There are interesting things in Perl you probably didn't know about. There are things in Perl that are interesting you know about, but they're not al always safe to use them. And there are quite cool stuff you can find on this module. There are actually plenty of more. I just presented a few of them. You, 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 you saw at the beginning of the presentation there are plenty of other operators. Um, you can find them on the, on the website. And, and you sh it's at my conclusion is it's at your own risk if you want to use them or not. Questions? Um, I think I showed you like thirty-five percent, 
maybe more, maybe a half. But there are still plenty of them, and yeah, just go and check it out. Other questions? If not, yes. Um, just two of the ones I presented. I mean, the enterprise, I find it pretty cool to, yeah. That's what I'm saying, and I, I didn't get an error either, any of the times. Sorry? Enterprise. We, well, what we've talked about. And the namifications part, I, I, that's, that's quite straightforward, yes. Um, so okay, so the question is, is, is there anywhere set which are safe or, and which are not? And my answer is, uh, I, I think nobody knows because they, they weren't planned in the beginning. Or this is what I know so far. Maybe some of them were planned and we just don't know and, and Larry will let us find them out. But anyway, the, the idea is that no, there's no, there's no such thing. Each of them are presented. Here's what you can do. Some of them are not are not safer in lower versions. There are others that are not safer even 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 in the current version, like 520 or higher, and so on. But there's no like a table with rankings and which is safe, which is not. No, there's no such thing. Other questions? If not, I I hope you find this useful and good luck with the next presentations. Thanks. We have a 10-minute break before the next lecture. Thank you.